Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Oh man, feels so good to be back recording some Dwarf Fortress. <sighs> I'd like to introduce everybody to the love of my life, Dwarf Fortress. Don't tell my wife. Anyways, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but really, this game is balla. Absolutely balla. Nuts. Alright, so last time what we did, <laughs> we, we spent 25 minutes ooing and aahing over this this small this is a small world guys that we built looking at the different features admiring this beautiful haunted area here and dreaming of elven blood then we came to find out that in this world we are currently at war with the elves regardless of where we go fun now if you look over at the uh, regional map here you can even see aha elves elves Oh well, we're gonna just roll with it because, you know, losing is fun, right? That's the motto. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, we've picked our spot. Um, you know, we picked this spot because uh, it was pretty much uh, the best spot out of everything that we had. Um, you know, it's, uh, the temperature's okay. It's got a, quite a few trees, which is what the other spot lacked. Um, you know, vegetation's thick, so that'll be good for gathering, although we usually don't do too much gathering uh, outside of the late game, or the early game, excuse me. And uh, the surroundings are fine. Untamed wilds, don't let it scare you. It's really not that bad. Now, now that I'm saying that, it's probably going to be like a horde of stealing monkeys are going to, like, descend on me day one and, like, ravage my cart. And they're going to take everything and then run away flinging poop at me. That's probably what's going to happen. And if that does happen, uh, we'll just roll a new world, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think that's going to happen. It's never, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so, well, let's hit E. Now, that's lower KC. Uh, that is something you need to know in this game. Uh, there is a strong differentiation between uppercase and lowercase letters. Uh, because this game is so heavily uh, menu-driven, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you make note of that, okay? Because what, in some menus, what a lowercase letter does versus an uppercase letter does is uh, quite different. So, and you'll see more of that as I play the game, as I lead you through it. So, uh, so it looks like we're going to be settling here in the Forest of Warriors, uh, the realms of forever, the brushed continent. So, uh, let's do it. Let's hit E. Okay. It says, you have selected an area with salt water. Okay. It might be very difficult to survive here. Your selected civilization is dead or dying. Your dwarves might assume important position. Well, this sounds interesting already. So I guess the elves have really stuck it to the dwarves in this world. Well, maybe it's time for us to stick it back. All right. All right, so now, this is the next screen you're going to get. Now, you could hit play now, and I highly recommend against that because it's much, much better to prepare for the journey carefully. Uh, if you hit play now, you don't get to allocate any of your dwarf stuff. You don't get to pick what you're bringing. You just get, boom, this. Uh, you just get the uh, you know preloaded stuff. Uh, Excuse me. There are also some profiles here that some people have made, uh, including myself. I made these. Uh, but I'm going to actually just prepare for the journey carefully with you to show you kind of what I'm looking for and, and go through my thought process of, uh, of this. So uh, we'll hit enter. Okay. So the first screen you're going to see is our seven dwarfs. And as you can see right now, uh, all they have is uh, their name and the title peasant. And that's because they don't have any skills assigned to them. Uh, now, this would be a good time to go ahead and uh, maybe show you what Dwarf Therapist looks like. So I suppose I should probably set up a scene for that. I should have already done that. That's unfortunate that I didn't. Just bear right with me, please. Let's screen cap this. Okay, and 
I'll drag that out and make that bigger. I'm so sorry I didn't have this ready, but I really didn't. I, did, I guess I just didn't think about it. Uh, so uh, now that we uh, we have this, uh, this is Dwarf Therapist. Um, we're not going to connect it just yet because we haven't actually embarked, but this is a lifesaver uh, in terms of, you know, like keeping your dwarves on task, uh, keeping close tabs on their mood, uh, seeing what their actual skills are. It's really good whenever migrants come in because you're going to get migration waves depending on how well your fortress is doing and you can easily load this up they'll load in once they all get here and you can see oh well this guy's really good at you know being an axe dwarf and this guy all he does is uh, small animal dissection you are going to join my military <laughs> so anyways uh, we'll close that back out now and go back to dwarf fortress uh, so just keeping that in mind All right. Uh, so, we have seven uh, dwarves, seven victims. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see some options here. We've got tab. If we hit tab, that'll take us to the uh, to the items screen. Yeah, okay. Uh, e would just uh, embark us, <laughs> which would be a bad decision at this point. Uh, plus minus is how you add and take away. So, uh, like uh, this guy, Eshten Etislektad. Uh, what I would do is I would hit my right arrow to go over here to these skills and as you can see it says like not mine or not woodcutter so he's basically not anything um, to make him a uh, have some mining skill we would hit the plus button and now he's a novice miner uh, and as you can see his uh, his total over here went down to nine you're only allowed to give them up to ten points worth of skills so uh, keep that in your considerations. And that also goes against your total points, which is a, uh, a combination of the points you spend on these guys and your item points. So uh, I normally spend as I spend all of these points and then soak up the rest with items. Uh, I think that that is the most worthwhile way to go. Uh, we could view the dwarves. Uh, some people do like to actually look at the dwarves because it, it can get really uh, granular. I mean, this is the first one. There's nothing admirable about bullying others. Apparently that's her, you know, quote on life. She's 54 years old, born on the 14th of Obsidian in the year 196. She's very muscular. Her lo very long hair is braided. Her hanging lobed ears are splayed out. So she's really muscular. She's got long hair, it's very long, it's braided, and her ears are splayed out. But they're very short. <laughs> her head is extremely narrow. Her nose is slightly hooked. Her hair is goldenrod. Her skin is sandy top. Top hay? Taup? Hmm. Her eyes are jade. Her her eyes are slightly protruding. So as you can see, it gets really, really uh granular really really focuses in it's part of what makes this game fun uh, you know I'm not gonna read through the rest of it but anyways some people what they do is they look at this stuff and they really get into it and it is possible for you to look at what this dwarf likes and dislike what they're good at and to actually set them up with a job that's tailored towards that and that will make them better at that job but normally it's not necessary um, you know, if you're really into that, cool, great, go at it, you know, go do it. Um, but for a new player, I wouldn't worry about it at all. So we're going to hit escape. Um, okay, capital F lets us name our fortress. So if we hit capital F, uh, it's going to bring us to the naming. Now we can, uh, you know, we can mess with all these parts of it here which I don't normally like to do. We can hit R, lowercase r for random name. Uh, right now it's Zona Lash, which is Helm's League. So let's hit random, see what we get. Uh, Bekorablel, the Tempted Bust. Dastomanang, Sword Drills, Knife Moisten, Blot Treaty, Confused Bronze, Tomb Sprayed, Armor Princes. Hmm. First walls, or seas, labor squashed. So this is the name of our fortress, Trade Ancient. That sounds pretty cool. Let's go with that. Uh, so we'll hit Escape, 
And now we need to name our group. So the fierce iron, the wire of glory, the grooved salve, the fed floor, the held artifact, the abbey of liberty, the furious glove, the doors of sand, the wire of waxing, the disemboweled whip, the standard of labyrinths, the salves of noiselessness, the helm of heaven. That sounds pretty good. So we'll do that. Okay, so now we've done all these names. Uh, if you, And down here, the, the next one, uh, lowercase s, save. If you have an embark after you get it set up that you really like and you, you know, you, if you're like me and you're constantly making new places, you can save that embark profile, kind of like what you saw uh, in the first screen where it said prepare for the journey carefully. Uh, I have two embarks saved. I have one with coal and one with lignite. Um, you know, the, the downside to that is depending on what is available on your world, you can't always get the things that you've marked. Uh, coal is not always available. Lignite is not always available. So anyways, moving on. Uh, so let's see. Uh, what do we want to do here with this guy? Uh, well, you know, one thing uh, we definitely need to have is uh, we, we definitely are going to need... Uh, somebody who uh, can be our trader. So we're going to need uh, somebody who has some judge of intent and an appraiser. And that person will likely also end up being our uh, expedition leader. And then what we'll do uh, is we'll give them proficient mining. And as you can see, that took up all of his points. Uh, you know, you we get you know, as a dwarf uh, civilization. You'll get caravans uh, three times a we, three times a year, um, possibly less for us since we are at war with the elves and our civilization is dying. Uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect things. This could be a very very fun fortress. Uh, anyways. Um, all right. So the next guy uh, probably. See, we definitely need a woodcutter. Now, something you never want to put mining and woodcutting on together on a tune. Uh, I'm sorry, on a dwarf, because uh, just because the way it's set up, they can only have either a mining pick or a lumberjack axe. So it's not a good idea to bundle those two together. Uh, normally what I like to do with my woodcutter, because uh, woodcutting doesn't take very long to produce a lot of logs, so this is something that can be put on, put with another activity that's uh, more time intensive, and it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, so uh, I think a, a good idea might be to do, uh, you know, woodcutting and carpentry together. Uh, kind of makes sense. And uh, at the start of the game, the carpenter will be very busy making beds and uh, even stays pretty busy in the later game with some of the other things that you're going to want to keep around your fortress. Uh, next guy that we'll definitely, we're definitely going to need a, uh, a mason. We're definitely going to need a mason. Uh, this is going to be somebody who can make like furniture out of rock. So it's, uh, it's very necessary. And this is going to be somebody who is going to stay really hooked up especially in the early game. Uh, so we're probably not going to want to pair it with Miner. I mean, we could, but uh, you know we're going to be doing a lot of mining too, so this would kind of butt heads. Uh, so we're going to want to put them with something that, at least in the early game, uh, we won't be using as much. So it might be a good idea to put uh, Mason with something like um, Mechanic could be good because mechanic really all they do is make mechanisms and you don't really need a whole lot of mechanisms early game uh, outside of just you know odd traps and uh, you know linking up uh, levers to bridges which you'll see later uh, another one that we could possibly put it to would be maybe a brewer but we do we are going to get into brewing pretty quickly um, hmm let's see what else could we do here it's actually worth having. I mean, we could give him uh, a military skill, which could be good because that could uh, help us to get some uh, get get an earlier military going. But then we would basically be banking on getting another mason and a migration wave, which is hit and miss. Uh, we could 
And I think I kind of like this idea that just came to him, or came to me. <laughs> we could make him our doctor. Uh, doctor's pretty important. Uh, so what you do is you just basically give one point in wound dresser, diag diagnostician, surgeon, uh, bone doctor, and suture. And what that would do, or what that will do, is that will enable this character to become our chief medical dwarf. Uh, and if we had a hospital, he could do all of these things. He could diagnose them if they needed surgery. He could give it to them. He could set their bones. He could uh, suture their wounds and uh, dress and clean their wounds. So I think I kind of like that idea because our Mason, at least with my play style, is going to stay super duper busy. Okay. Uh, next up, next up. So we have a doctor. We've got a. Uh, excuse me. We have a trader. We're definitely going to need a bookkeeper. So I like to do. Um, I like to. You don't have to do this. Just to say, you don't have to do this. Okay. Um, but I like to put some points in record keeping to make it faster. Um, so I'm going to drop uh, some points in Record Keeper. Now, uh, what some people like to do is they like to take their person that's their trader, and they like to do the Record Keeper on their trader. I don't really like that because if a caravan comes and the person is working on updating the records, it can be really, really challenging to get your trader out to the trade depot and get them to stop with the records. So. Uh, we're going to do that. Um, hmm. uh, let's do some organizer two, and then uh, let's just do three there. And then what we'll do is, uh, you know, the thing about record keeping, it at the start of the game, it seems like it takes a long time, but it's really not that bad. Uh, record keeper would be an excellent person, I think, to put with, uh, like, the cook. Cook and a record keeper, I think, works out really well. Um, you know, I will be cooking a lot of meals, prepared meals. I will be brewing a lot. Uh, probably brewing more than cooking at first, but we'll see. Uh, next up. So we have a carpenter. We have a mason. Um, you know, it's a pretty good idea to take a weaponsmith and an armorsmith with you because... I just never seem to get them in migration waves. I've had them come a few times, but uh, you know, if you don't get one, it can really stink. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get a weaponsmith here, and also going to be a miner, and then an armorsmith, who is also a miner. I usually like to take uh, four people with proficient mining, and I think we have three. So this person's also going to get mining. Yep, yep. Oh, I'm out of points. Okay, so I'm going to have to switch over to the item screen and kind of axe a few things that we just don't need. Um, all right, so copper picks are important. We're actually going to take more than two um, because we're going to actually have four people mining. I might even take five and enable the mining on somebody who isn't a proficient miner uh, just because there's not going to be anything else for them to do. Uh, copper battle axes are completely unnecessary. Uh, at the start of the game unless you just absolutely feel threatened and feel the need to have somebody with a battle axe. Uh, normally I recommend just take getting rid of them but you do need something to chop wood with so what you're going to want to do is hit uh, hit the minus key twice and then hit N for new okay and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down to training weapons and just pick a training axe any training axe. Now it's not going to be good for using as a weapon but it'll work just fine for lumberjacking and it costs a whole lot less. So uh, iron anvil, uh, some people don't take anvils with them on uh, embarkation because they are kind of expensive mm, but uh, I think in the state of this game with the fact that our civilization is about to just maybe go kaput uh, it might be a good idea to actually take one with us because uh, you need an anvil to do any kind of uh, weapon smithing, armor smithing. So I think we're going to take it. Uh, rum and ale, both important. This is like the lifeblood of a dwarf fortress. 
Uh, normally I like to take quite a bit of this stuff, probably a little bit overkill. Uh, plump helmet spawns, very good. These will be uh, our early source of um, drink, basically. So as, uh, plump helmet spawns are really good because you plant them. They're your, you know, your first big crop, and you plant them in the ground, and they make plump helmets. And then when you brew a plump helmet for drink, it makes dwarven wine. So you get a unit of that, and you get the plump helmet spawn back. So it just it's like a renewable resource. It's awesome. Uh, pigtail seeds are really good, uh, really good for making cloth, uh, but we're not going to take any with us. Uh, cave wheat, another thing that you can farm underground. Not taking it with us. Sweet pods, nope. Rock nuts, nope. Dimple cups, nope. Prepared giant great horned owl lung. Okay. Uh, I'm sure, I, I guess I'm fine with that. I mean, it's a meat. I like to take meat with me uh, as long as it only costs two points. Uh, we're not going to take the cave fish. We are going to take plump helmets. We're not going to take this stuff at all. The only thing that maybe you can make an argument with would be the thread uh, because you need thread to do sutures. Um, so, I mean, if you had an early accident where a dwarf got uh, a nasty gash or something, uh, it could be pretty bad, but normally that doesn't happen. Uh, we're not going to take any buckets, splints, crutches, or wheelbarrows, or step ladders. So, as you can see, we have a ton of points left over now. Uh, now, before we jump back into what items uh, we're going to add into this, let's finish up our dwarves. Uh, so, we definitely said that we wanted this guy to be a miner, and... Um, the only thing, other thing that we have left, I think, is uh, brewing. Uh, so notable things that I'm leaving out here: um, not bringing a stone crafter, that works up pretty fast. I'm not bringing a gem cutter, uh, also that goes up pretty fast. And uh, let's see, uh, fishing, not too worried about that. Usually comes on a migrant wave. Uh, not bringing an herbalist. Uh, you know, all, the only thing that that really... Oh, we need a grower. We need a farmer. So some, something's going to have to change here. Because we have got to have... Well, we don't have to have a brewer. But it's really important. So what I think I might do is this guy was our bookkeeper, right? No, we can't put Cook and Brewer together. That's a, that's not a win. That's not a win at all. Huh. So what we might do is make him a we could make him, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make him a cook and a grower because uh, plants can and will rot in the fields. So it needs to be somebody who can pick up what they're, you know, leave what they're doing. Um, I think we're going to have to make this cook something else. Uh, like maybe the armor smith. No, nah, weaponsmith. He's going to be the weaponsmith. You're going to make a lot more armor than you will weapons. And then we'll take Weaponsmith off of this fellow. And then he can be our bookkeeper. And that'll be okay. And then... Wait, we still need a brewer. Ah, uh, okay, that's what I was going to do. That's what I was going to do. Uh, I was going to actually ratchet down his skills a little bit. Because it's not necessary to have all these up, really. I mean, just put a six in each and then dump the three in brewing. And that'll be fine. Okay, so now uh, we have zero points left to spend on any of our dwarfs. So we're going to look at items now. Okay, so as I had mentioned earlier, uh, picks, I'm going to want to bring five. Uh, that is going to be a large proportion of our points, but it's going to enable us to get into the mountain or into our spot. Uh, quick enough, quickly uh, so that we can get things moved inside in case there are thieving birds or monkeys around. 
Uh, Iron Anvil, we're only going to take one. Uh, with the rum and the ale, uh, I normally like to take like 31. Uh, it's usually good to take odd numbers of things because, uh, because of the barrels that they come in. Uh, a trick that some people do is when they when they're picking their meat to start out with, instead of taking just a few kinds of meat with bigger stack numbers, they'll take like one of each kind because you get a barrel for each different kind. So it's just kind of a way to game the system, but I don't really don't feel like doing that. Uh, plump helmet spawn. Uh, I think we're going to take like 50 because look at them guys. They're super cheap. They're super cheap. They're OP. Um, uh, I'm fine with taking that. Uh, plump helmets themselves. Why don't we just go ahead and take 40 and eh, maybe 30 because they're expensive and then that's fine. So what we need to add here, we're going to add uh, dwarven, dwarven beer. That's ale. Uh, do, 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 drinks. Dwarven beer. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we're going to, we're just going to make 31 of that. So that'll give us 93 units of drink, I believe. And that should be actually plenty. It's a little bit overkill, but uh, I'd rather have too much than too little. That's for damn sure. Uh, so, all right, we need some more meat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here to meat. And actually, you can just type here to uh, search. So I'm just going to type meat. <laughs> and then I'm just going to look for things that cost two. Um, because I don't know that there's any difference in the nutritional value between a 2 and a 4 and a 6. I think it really has more to do with like the rarity and the difficulty of the animal. So um, I'm just going to go here with the mountain goat meat and I'm going to go... Why don't we just up it to 21? We'll go 21 on the meats and we'll get like three different kinds. I think that sounds pretty good. So great horned owl meat. We're eating a lot of great horned owl. Okay, uh, so what else would we need? We've got some food, we've got some drink, we've got our picks, our axe. Um, so if we scroll down through here, um, no, 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 no. All right, so this, uh, we want to look at the stone just to see what's available to us. So we could get lignite. Lignite is good, but not as good as bituminous coal. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not seeing bituminous coal, and that's going to be a shame. Uh, yeah, so we're going to take, uh, probably going to take some lignite with us, just in case our embark does not have it. Uh, we could take wood with us, but I'm not going to. Uh, metal bars, not necessary, not necessary, none of this is necessary. Could take some cheese, but it's really expensive. Uh, uh, a thought that some people do is uh, they like to take some gypsum plaster with them because that's what you use to make casts. So it's kind of the same thought pattern along with like taking thread. In case a disaster strikes, you want to have some on hand um, just so you don't have to go through the rigmarole of like, oh my god, I've got to make some plaster so we can have a cast. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And if something happens, well then you can laugh at me. Uh, no, 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 I don't think we need any of this, any of this junk. Miscellaneous? Ah, well, see, we could take, um, we could take coke instead of lignite, but here's the thing, all right? Lignite, when you start the fuel reaction with lignite, you're netting for fuel. Just so basically uh you start out with a unit of charcoal and then you make coke with lignite and then it keeps on it uses the coke that you make to make the next batch. So each batch of lignite that you burn through you're netting four. And that's for three P a piece. Or we could take the coke at ten P a piece and it just doesn't make any sense. So we're just gonna take the lignite. Now, when the traders come, will we trade for coke? Will we trade for charcoal? Almost certainly, yes. Maybe not the charcoal, but definitely the coke. So I think that's pretty much going to be it. I mean, I do travel pretty light. We're going to add some animals. Uh, we, we definitely want uh, a breeding pair of dogs. And perhaps we even want two females so that we can try to get some dogs popped out. 
and because uh, war dogs are pretty cool and they're very useful for defending against like cobalt thieves we'll see uh, we probably want uh, a male cat we probably want to avoid female cats if at all possible just because we don't want to have a cat explosion uh, other than that I don't think we're gonna take anything else we will have the two beasts of burden that drag our wagon and if we get lucky they might be a mateable pair that would be great uh, so I think uh, with the rest of our points uh, let's go ahead and let's add another female dog and then let's dump everything into lignite so all said and done when that lignite's done we're gonna that's gonna make about 200 ish units of coke which is a pretty good start um, that means that even if we dig down and we don't find any bituminous coal we don't find any lignite we're still going to be able to craft uh, probably enough armor assuming that we find good metal to make armor with uh, for our first military squad which I always like to make my first military squad a metal armor unit but some people like to go the archery route because it's easier to get up and running uh, anyways uh, at this point we are ready to embark so uh, what we're gonna do we're just gonna hit the lowercase e we spent all of our points our, we've named everything uh, dwarves are set uh, picks anvil drink food yes 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 am I missing anything I don't think so maybe I am if I am you can laugh at me all right let's hit E it's gonna pause Aha! You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all... Aceratus. Hmm. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you but it is spring now enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the grizzly bears get hungry a new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place nish zu tash trade ancient strike the earth so now you just hit enter and boom so it's going to automatically pause uh pause the game whenever you come in and one thing I immediately like to do, because this view right here, this uh, local view, it's, uh, it's really kind of useless. So just hit tab twice, and then you'll have more of this view that you can actually use. Uh, so I guess before we put a cut in here, because I'm about to cut this, uh, let's just look around and see what we got. Uh, so you can see there's a ton of trees. I mean, look at all these trees. So that's really cool. Um, I see some water down here. Murky pool slope, murky pool slope. Still, that's fine. What is this? Wet soil floor, huh? So it's maybe this is kind of like a swamp, swampy swamp. Uh, and then we got some water here. Uh, you do have to be careful with the water because dwarves can, can uh, get attacked by fish. What's this? A river otter. Oh, wonder how river otter meat tastes. Um, so that's pretty good. It looks like we're gonna have some maybe some good fishing. There's more river otters. Yeah, more river otters. So if we ever have a hunter, well, you know what he's gonna be doing. Uh, so we can go down a level and try to get under these trees uh, by holding shift and then the period key, which is uh, basically like right uh, right arrow. Okay. So if we go down, you can see. Uh, actually the game kind of placed this up on top of a little hill so we might just dig straight down into that hill a few layers because um, uh, if we look here at these walls this is soil uh, I don't really like to dig my workshops or my living quarters into soil uh, just because I don't like the way it looks so we'll probably go down uh, quite a few Z layers maybe five or ten and then we'll look at that we'll just see what we get into I mean this is still soil yeah just a different kind of soil and then see this is now we can actually kind of see what's going on down here there's a bunch of trees lots of big trees um, it's pretty interesting I've never seen anything like that before it's really neat huh 
bunches, bunch of otters. Okay, so we go down again. Uh, looks like that's probably some clay. Is that fire? Fire clay. Damp red sand. Okay, well sand's pretty good. You can use it to make glass. There is some clay right there. Uh, some more clay. And now we can't see anything else. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be going down some Z layers here before we do anything. Uh, but I think it looks pretty promising, guys. Um, I like it. I really I like how this looks. That's really neat. I've never seen that before uh, like that. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting into this and uh, showing you guys some different things with Dwarf Fortress and having some fun. Um, but anyways, uh, that'll have to wait till next time. I think this video's probably ran a little bit long. Maybe not. Maybe it's about average. I really should start keeping some sort of a time uh, keeper here or stopwatch or something. Um, but I haven't yet. I guess because I'm lazy. I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, so next time we'll actually get to playing and I'll show you what's up. So uh, until then... Get your game on.